Welcome to the Ring City, and welcome back to uh, our playthrough. Uh, yeah, we're in the Ring City, so this is basically the final sort of, I'd say, set point for the DLCs, and one of my favorite areas. So, yeah, not not really much to say. It's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that, and look at that, and look at look at everything, and look at me. I'm um, Aren't I handsome? But, uh... Ah, a friend. Hack. They brought thee here, did they not? Give rest to thy falsity. I would be an ally to thee. <laughs> hmm. See, the problem with every NPC in this game is that everyone sounds basically unhinged. Through no fault of their own, I understand that certain events have caused them to lose their minds, but it makes it very hard to trust if you. it is the dark soul thou desirest, then seek Filianor's church. Ah. The base of the cliff. There wilt thou the sleeping princess waken. Her slumber is a deceit, a lid covering an overgrown privy, a prop to keep thee from the dark soul of thine desire. Ah, nope, no, 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 not here, not here. We come across our first hurdle. So that fellow over there, he's going to be summoning archers, and it's basically just a firing squad, and it's really, really dangerous. So we need to run through there, and then run over here. And then down and should be safe. Many of us are by the fire, forsaken. I speak of thine kind and mine. mine. Behold this city. We are kindred, but like two eyes which gaze upon the other. Fear not the dark, my friend, and let the feast begin. It's, it's interesting how many interpretations there can be for some of these, uh, for some of these dialogues. I guess that's sort of Miyazaki's thing, he likes people to fill in the gaps. I, I, I can see that perspective, I kind of like that too. But, it's like, fear not the dark. And I'm assuming, if, I, if my law is correct about this place, it's the home of the pygmies. The pygmies being humanity, I think? And... It's basically where Gwyn put them, because he didn't... I guess you could say borderline racist. But, yeah. Gwyn didn't like them, but they helped during the war. He needed them for the war against the dragons. And so he needed to recruit their help. But, obviously, that kind of help doesn't come for free. Especially when you're incurring more losses than gaining. So, I guess... Gwyn gave the Pygmies the Ringed City, which, you know, when you fly in through that opening cutscene, does resemble an Orlando. And so he gave them the city and sort of used that to appease them. And in order to fulfill the covenant, he also gave them his youngest daughter, Filianor, who is the princess that is slumbering in the tower. So she is the one we are going to find. She is the one we're going to see. And this whole ringed city is basically just a monument of appeasement. That's all it is. But it's interesting how that character said, you know, don't fear the dark. Because technically, once the fire goes out... Shit, shh. Hold on, I'm being cursed. So once the dark does take hold, it's technically the Pygmy's time. Right now we're in the Age of Fire, which is the Age of Gwyn, the Age of Lords. And once we get to the fire fading... I uh, can't use that. So once we get to the fire fading, that's when it's the human's time. Now the whole point of linking the fire is basically Gwyn selfish. Gwyn doesn't want anyone to have control over what to be built. 
Which, you know, from that perspective makes sense. If I spent all this time building an infrastructure and building a world and making sure that world made sense and defending that world so that it could continue to go on and doing the whole power struggle against the dragons thing, I wouldn't want someone to take that from me. The best thing about the Ring DLC as well is the fashion. We are approaching peak fashion. The Ringed Knights, oh, they, 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 they are Drip. The representatives of Drip have now entered the game and it's so bloody cool. Because when you, like, when you see them, you're like, holy crap, these guys are, these guys are, you know, a force. These guys are, they look, they look amazing. They have this giant circle in their chest. They look like Iron Man if he was just dragged through hell. And when you read about the lore, it's kind of cool. Okay, so many places we can go from here. This is like the swampy area we were looking from up on high. Because, you know... Miyazaki loves his swamps. One big swamp section wasn't enough. Understandable. You need two. Just to hammer it home that this is a Dark Souls game. But now we meet one of the greatest characters in this game. What the blazes? What the... Oh, sugar. My antivirus. No. <laughs> Too many pop-ups. No. 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 <laughs> um... Uh, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, my dear. No, my dear. Oh, I need to get rid of this pop-up. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. Why is this even popping up? I don't even have the antivirus. Why is that popping up? But what I couldn't show you earlier, because stupid pop-ups making me panic, is my dear. Oh shit, yeah, he's on the other side now. So this is my dear. He is a dragon. A full dragon. Like, not some pansy wyvern, not some, you know, half-baked thing. He's a full-on dragon. And yeah, so that's, that's Madir. We, uh... We will be dealing with him in this... In this little segment of the game, we will be dealing with him. Now, there is someone invading. Where, where are you invading from, sir, please? Hello? Mr. Invader? In here? Hello? No? God, I need, I need Google Maps for this place. Do I, do I drop down again? I, I've already dropped down like six times. This is where I started. Okay, this is where I started. So. So, um. Um. Okay, like this, and then that. No, that didn't work. God, I look like a... I must seem like an absolute fool right now. Okay, this way, and then back. No, this is the beginning again. Oh my god, it's the beginning. Oh no, where am I supposed to go? <sighs> no. And that's the beginning again. I'm... Am I missing something? Oh my. I swear I'm good at the game. Oh. Man. We're not even halfway through. <laughs> okay, and now comes basically a pre fight. I want to say a pre fight, a pre boss, a pre, uh, pre uh, mature, a premature encounter. And basically, once we exit this area here. And this is why I kept the lightning weapon. We basically come face to face with Medir. Who is here. And he's going to blast a bit of flame. So we hang by this rock. Unsuccessfully. And now we run through. To his hand. And now if I do this. And now he's going to do a little bit right underneath him. Whoa. That's freaking gnarly. So 
the goal is hit his hands. And again, we're gonna come to the side here, let him do his supernova. So he does have a health bar. It's a little bit hard to see. Okay. 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 He did get a little bit wild and he got a little bit wild and I couldn't see shit. <laughs> now he's going to go a bit crazy. And now he's going to put some flamey flame down. There we go, we've got a big hit there. So that's kind of what you want to do, and then you want to basically stagger him until you get to this point, and then you want to critical him and he'll fall down, basically. So that's that's basically the, the beginning. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the beginning of Medea. And that's kind of just to... See, this is what I like about Medea. That little encounter contextualizes the boss fight later and i love that i really do love that it's not just oh yeah we're suddenly here now and things are happening and this is why they're happening it's just you did this earlier and that's why we are where we are right now which i i really really like that i'm, I'm questioning whether whether that lightning weapon would actually do anything for us because we're losing a lot of stamina for each hit, and I don't think it's worth the payoff. So we want to go this way. And is it... Okay, it's there. Okay. So we'll do that again. Bring it down. And we want to jump off here. And we want to go this way first. Because we want to drop down to the statue. And get the item. That's what we wanted. Perfect. So that's really going to buff our stamina speed. Like, immensely. And then I guess... I guess we'll do Medea. I, I, I guess. I don't want to, but I guess I guess we have to. <laughs> he's just... He's hard, man. I don't... I don't... He's tough. He's really tough. I mean, this is one of my favorite boss fights, but it's just, it, it really does put me on edge. Like, seriously puts me on edge. I mean, there is a summon for it, but we haven't talked to her. So it's like, do we talk to her or do we not talk to her? It's, it's... Like, the fight is nice. Well, it's not nice. It's like, you can do the fight without her, and it's a little bit easier. But then you don't get her quest. Ah, yeah, but you don't get her quest reward. Okay, one minute, I'll be back. I'm known as Shira. Okay, Shira. Servant to the Princess Filianor. Filianor. Got you. Of the church. Church. Don't Understood. Ken to God's name, but surely Ken to the terrors of Clean. Does the fuck. Okay. speak for his nurse. Met Hamid to watch over the sleep, and yet. Okay, accept. Uh. I'll, I'll explain what that all was earlier I'll, I'll explain that in just a little bit but I just wanted to get that, that stuff before these guys ruin a very touching request so basically what was that whole quest so Shira who is the basically the guard knight of Filianor she uh, made a request to put down Midir so Medea was a dragon, an arch dragon, 
a descendant of arch dragons who was raised by Gwyn, basically, like indirectly raised by Gwyn. It was under Gwyn's uh, command, and it was basically charged to protect Filianor by fighting the abyss. And yeah, Medir's great. Medir's great at that. He fights the abyss, and he's he's doing his duty diligently. The problem is the abyss corrupts everything. And Medea is no exception. And basically he has been corrupted by the abyss, but he still fights, even though he's basically corrupted. And it's basically just a mercy killing. That's what Shira asks you to do. It's basically a mercy killing. The problem is <laughs> Medea. Medea has no mercy. Medea is one hell of a fight. And probably one of the hardest in the game, I, I will I will declare, one of the hardest in the game. If not the hardest. So, we're going to try this out. Like I said, I have had multiple experiences with Medir to know that this ain't 40. Jesus, okay, let's, let's put on something a bit more beefy then. Uh, Medea is definitely going to be tough. Very hard hitting. Very fast. Very, very fast. And, um... Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna really give this the old college try. So let's drop. And this is what I mean when I say it's contextualized. So when we knocked Medea off of the cliff, we damaged his wings. So he fell all the way down to here. And we damaged his wings, which then answers the question, why is he down here? Well, one, we knocked him off. Two, his wings are damaged, which means he can't fly out. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I love that music opening. Damn it. Damn it. Damn. Damn, I knew it. I knew it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Barely did any damage to him. So like with most dragons in the game, in any Souls game with dragons, the head. The head takes the most damage. And... Like with most dragons in any Souls game, the head is the hardest thing to get because the camera is fighting you and the dragon is incredibly fast. So that's that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a very big problem. But we're gonna we're gonna get through it. We are definitely gonna get through it. Lost all my estheses. Oh no. Oh shit, phase two. That's right. God, okay. I got a little bit serious on that one. <laughs> that, um, okay. So, the opening was terrible. That opening was disgusting. It was abysmal. I don't know what the hell was happening there. I lost about seven Estuses and I didn't even hit him once. That, that's ridiculous. That's, that's unfathomable amounts of just absolute mockery um he's not as aggressive as i thought he was i think in my head i'm playing him up a lot more than he was Oh, 
Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, that was that was rough. That was rough. I think in my head I'm playing him up a lot more than he was. That's it. Oh, that's it. <laughs> that critical. That critical was so nice. Oh, that critical was so nice. Um, yeah, okay, great. Um, that's Madeir. <laughs> that is Dark Eater Madeir. Um, don't really know what more to say. Um, lightning damage. Lightning damage helps. This helps. The Carthus Blood Ring. That, that definitely helped. Uh, patience. Patience, I think, is definitely one of the biggest things you're going to need going into that fight. Because he, um... Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to organize my thoughts. So, obviously, he has a very high health pool. You could see that my club that was doing about 800 to normal enemies was doing, you know, 200 to him. And that is still hitting his head, which is his weak point. And he's very strong. Luckily, actually, he didn't do his big boom boom laser attack. He only did it once in all the runs I've done. He only did that big boom boom laser attack once, which was quite crazy. And I think I want to do vitality. I'm not going to lie. It's a bit stupid to waste these on Vitality. It is. It is a stupid decision to waste that on Vitality. Get that to 40 first. And then we'll talk. <laughs> um, thank you. Now, dress light. If, it, if you're like me, dress light. Very light. This Without the, the Great Axe, I'm at 30% heaviness. Because if you're going to get one-shotted by him anyway... You might as well wear something that gives you mobility. There's no point being a tank that can still get blown over in one hit and have to deal with that absolute abhorrent slow movement. Get yourself a lightning weapon. This one's good. I didn't even use the the this thing, so that probably would have done a lot more damage. Uh, but patience and stay close to him. Not too close that you'll just get swiped out by him, but stay close enough 
that he won't zone you from far away. His fire is probably the worst thing. I would rather be hit by him than be burnt by him. And yeah, generally you should be okay. Dodge the dark spirits to the side. They shouldn't be too hard to avoid if you just group them all up and then dodge at the last second once they all group together. Should be a fairly simple dodge. Uh, what else? What else can I say about the old Medir? He is a very fun fight. Because he's fast. He's fast and he constantly keeps you on your toes. And it's very intuitive once you enter a state like that. Because you're always getting used to moving. There's no downtime. There's no hesitation. You just know beat after beat after beat what's going to happen. Uh, do, 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 do. Just be, yeah, just be patient. You're not going to blitz him. I mean, there are builds that can blitz him, but for your first time fighting him, or just a casual player, he's going to be very high health, very aggressive. The fight's going to take you quite a while. Each run will take you quite a while. Now, like I said before, there is a summon. There is definitely a summon. Shira, the lady who we went to help and need to go turn in this quest, essentially, to. Um... But I feel like she makes it a lot harder because Midir is already erratic. And when Shura is is in play. It just makes it a little bit harder. You're on one HP, sir. Stop this futile resistance. Oh my goodness, I got them first try. Does he just... Wait, does he drop them? Anyway, he just drops them regardless? I think he does. I think he's scripted to drop them regardless. Dex? Oh! The only thing I don't like is the face hood. It's basically just a hood. You think it's like a mask when you see the uh, enemy. But it's just a hood. And I don't like that. I would rather have had it had a faceplate or something. Sort of like... Sort of like, um... What's his face? From, uh... Uh... Death Stranding. Higgs. The name's Higgs. Like the God Particle. Chaffling B. <laughs> I hope it's not a player. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for PvP. I want to do all the bosses. It is a player. It is a player. What the blazes? being hit by something. I, I did it. I did it, but I didn't do it. I did it. <laughs> I what? Thank you, Kay. I appreciate you, lad. Thank you for the win. Thank you for the loss as well. <laughs> Just thank you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, I appreciate it. I hope I did it. Because if I didn't, I'm going to be big angry. <laughs> no, I got the rewards. I got the rewards. That means it happened. It, it's fine. It's kind of messed up. I'm visiting her wearing her eldest brother's raiment. In the tallest room at the tallest tower, in the highest room at the tallest tower lies the princess.
So yeah, the Ring City. It's not too bad. And herein lies our Filianor. My lady, it is time to awaken from your slumber. Such is my charge. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This is the face of a man on a mission. Anyway, let's awaken the princess that everybody has told me not to do. Okay, I swear it was like this when I got here. <laughs> this wasn't this isn't my fault. I cannot I cannot be held liable for this. How was I supposed to know touching the orb would destroy the entire world? How could I have possibly known that? Oh, but irregardless, our journey in the Ring City has seemingly come to a very catastrophic conclusion. There's not much left, except one bit of business, and if I was to sum that up in one sentence, to carry you through to the next episode, it would be this. I know what it is I must do, but I don't think I have the strength to do it. <laughs>